Hello and welcome back to the Dungeons and Dragons Podcast UK. My name is Yasmin and I will be the DM. Hi, my name is Samantha. I play Laura Greyvale and she is a sorceress from the province of Navalia. Hello, I'm Colin and I play Cuin de Greymont, a paladin from Florban in the province of Gavany. Hi, I'm Ryan. I play Ogvar Shawfort, a goat herding, mushroom seeking ranger from Keswick. Hi, I'm Rick, and I play Otto, a spring sage from Hanwyr, sworn to the land, wandering the plain and setting wrongs to right with his ursine companion, Bojo. Yasmin released a detailed recap of our companions, their missive and the journey so far. It has been amazing for us as a crew and equally so that you have joined us each week to share in the events that have unfolded. So let us not dally and dispense with any further faffing and hop on board the wagon with our heroes as they roll steadily southwards away from Stagwick and in to season two. Q. Episode 119 At the end of episode 118, after obtaining answers to an age-old fable, the team's time to depart had arrived. The boys made the visit to Eliza, the blacksmith, a priority and were pleased as punch with her chic and clever craftsmanship. Laura traipsed over to see Jane, Stagwick seamstress, to provide payment and pick up a beautiful blue dress that she had commissioned for Ivona, followed by the attainment of an appropriately sized hand-drawn cart for her brother Brady. These were both intended as personal gifts that she wanted to give. As afternoon approached, Quinn acquired a plethora of pre-ordered culinary delights from Buck's Bakes, and Orland was now overflowing with pies, pasties, and some particularly tasty sweet treats. Leaving Stagwick was bittersweet, and with everyone gathered at the gates, breaking the bonds of their newly forged friendships was sad. But if they failed to succeed in their mission set by Micaeus, Innistrad would, in all likelihood, go to hell in a handcart as it fell prey to its dark and demonic planar influences. Episode 119, Devious Doors. You have left the town of Stagwick. Uh, Proceeding forth out of the one gate, this northern gate in the wall, Um, you have the horses hitched up to the wagon and Bojo the bear trailing behind. Um, From this point onwards, you don't really have any designated roads. There are no roads that go down to your destination, which is Jenwick's Tower. Um, There there are rough tracks, but nothing kind of well-worn in. This obviously is a not very well-travelled route. So, Ogfar, you're driving the carriage. Could you make me a couple, I say three, survival checks for me? Okie dokie. Or carriage driving checks, whichever one you have got. Is that a thing? Uh, Possibly not. I might have made that up. (laughs) (laughs) We'll just go survival. Pretty sure there is a vehicle check somewhere. Animal handling, perhaps? No. Is that all handling? Uh, it was mine, yeah, that... I think. Uh, water-based vehicles. Yeah, there, there are vehicle checks. They do exist. Uh, I don't think I've has them. No. Can we just go survival then? Yeah, just survival, please. Okay, first one. It's going to be a... Uh, 19 all in, uh, 14 and a 5. Okay. And then... Uh, uh, 
8 and 14 are 22. 22. Nice, well done. And then uh, 16, which is a 14 and a 2. 14, 2. Okay. Otto, what spells did you cast when you left the town? So, at the start of the day, there's a few things that I would have cast to uh, prepare for the day. So, Otto will have started by casting a spell called Lay, in, Lay of the Land, which gives him a fairly good understanding of the terrain within about 50 miles or so. He casts a spell he's picked up uh, some time ago called Snowshoes, uh, both on himself and on Bojo, which allows us to travel a little bit faster during the day. He's glowing again, that luminous armour that taxes him somewhat when he uh, when the spell ends. And as a just-in-case, he's got Greater Magic Fang on Bojo. And on the whole party, there will also be called, a spell called Wind at Back, which is designed to double all of our overland movement for up to 12 hours, just to mean that we, we can get on a bit quicker. Okay, nice. That's an amazing set of spells there. Okay, so Ogfar, with those rolls, you would have had... Um, you've got enough knowledge, you've got enough capability to figure out the correct direction to take the wagon in. So you're now travelling more of a uh, northeastern direction, um, dropping, down, uh, dropping lower down Nefalia, as well as moving towards the outmost edge. Um, kind of coming around this, this this curve down towards this large spur of land which seems to hold only Jenrig's tower. So you travel this did I say northeast? Yes. I meant southeast. Yeah. Southeast, sorry. Uh, so you travel this southeastern direction, which actually for you you're able to kind of figure out that the best path to take is actually through this logging path. Um, so you pass the entrance to Stonewell Hall and everyone can roll me a what can we do um, I want you all to roll me a wisdom check please just straight Ooh, wisdom right. my favourite oh that's a, drink. that's a 17 minus 1 so that's a 16 for a lot nice that's a two plus one, plus three. <laughs> oh, there's always <laughs> one. <laughs> Opa? I did well. I did a nap 20. Ooh. Hey! Here we go. <laughs> and there we go. Otto had a 13 plus five for 18. 18, nice. Okay, so all of you, with the exception for Kewin, um, who is probably doing his usual queuing thing on the back of the wagon or the front of the wagon, swinging his, his legs, legs, humming. Dum, dum, dum. Yep. Um, as you pass the entrance to this hall, you obviously take a chance to look at it in the daylight, uh, and it, it's it's not a bright day. It's it was perhaps sunny when you left, but the clouds have slowly covered over, um, and, and it's it's kind of turned into this again very atypical grey day. But with the light levels now having risen during the day, you can see a lot more of this house. But as you all pass, with the exception of Kewin, and you look, you all get this feeling, uh, this perhaps this lightness. Um, before, when you entered into this house, when you were on the grounds, it felt quite heavy, quite foreboding. But you can almost all sense this kind of uh, this palpable sense of, of relief and lightness as if a dark cloud has lifted from over the, the site. The stonework doesn't look a grim grey anymore. It looks to be quite a um, a light coloured stone in, in this in this morning light. It looks quite light. Uh, and just generally looking at it, everything looks a lot better. So travelling in this southeasterly direction, you very quickly lose uh, this very well cut logging path and it turns more into um, quite rocky, quite, uh, it, there's lots of roots in the way and you know the, the, the travel is 
slowed a bit because you've got to take into account this, this different terrain. Nevertheless, you make good progress. And for the next three days, you gradually make your way down to the southernmost tip of Nefalia. The terrain, uh, as, as you pass, you've passed out this uh, this section of forest, this where there's logging was happening up by Stagwick. You don't really see much else in terms of forest. It's all quite flat, quite barren. You see swampy parts. Um, which you obviously avoid with the carriage, not wanting to risk getting stuck in the mud. Um, but it's quite desolate and quite lonely. As you travel, you get the sea winds um, pushing in from offshore, uh, which leave a tang of salt in the air, and you can hear the cries of gulls as they circle overhead. Your travel, your, d your days of travel pass quite quickly, quite quietly. Is there anything that anybody wants to do over these three days? Uh, Otto, I'm assuming you're going to be recasting your spells every morning. Yeah, just to make sure that we are travelling as fast as we can, minimise any dangers from travel. Yep. Yeah, I think Alora would also um, be casting some daily spells as well. So she would probably cast false life which she would have to roll for if it became necessary to do so um, in order to determine what extra she got um, and she would probably cast mage armor on herself as well for for eight hours of the day either one of those spells both of them would affect her okay nice Kieran is there anything you're doing in particular apart from sharpening me sword so going tumpty 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 tum tumpty tumpty tum Oh, and also, Alora would have bathed her eye each day as well. Yep, thank you. Kieran, was there anything else you were doing? No. Okay. You're not going to change the tune up? Legs. You're not going to change the tune up, think of a new one? Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> dear. Oh, dear. Okay, second day it rains. Um, <laughs> Ogfar. <laughs> Is there, is there anything in particular you are doing during the travel down? Um, probably just um, besides driving wagon, um, probably just a little bit of work with Murdoch, um, getting him fly, letting him fly out again, and um, a bit more sort of using him to uh, hone his tracking skills, keeping an eye on the road where we're going. Uh, which way to go and sort of things like that sort of tied in with a survival skill um, yeah nice and I think at yeah. this point we can say that Murdoch is now fully trained mm, nice okay that's all good yes Otto so obviously this, the spells we're doing each day there's he's going to spend each day during travels trying to spend a day with each of them maybe leaving Laura till last um just trying Probably to get safe. to know these people a little bit better. Um, what is to get to know the people you're travelling with a little bit. Um, the only other thing that's perhaps a little bit strange in his routine is because of the luminous armour saps his strength at the point it dissipates, he'll also be casting a spell at time for rest, which will essentially double his uh, healing for the evening, which gets rid of the side effects of that. Nice. Sounds great. So... Over the three days, is there anything in particular you want to talk about with each of the other characters, with Ogvar, Kewin, and Laura? Or is it just a more of a general kind of get to know you and, and, you know, introduce Bojo and get everyone used to Bojo? Oh, there's definitely things he's very curious about. He wants to know what this magic hat is that Laura's wearing, because it must be magical, because there's no other reason someone would choose to wear such a thing. Um, okay. He's very curious about Murdoch, um, and... This uh, this crow that's just, uh, obviously so intelligent, and the other thing, with respect to Kewin, actually he's more interested in the bag. He's seen this bag once and seen it's now got a skirt on it. And also, it's gonna be very very curious what what the story is behind this bag. Okay, any response to those? Perhaps start with the Laura. Um, I think Alora would be I think she'd be quite amused um, I think she would share the story 
behind the hat. But she wouldn't she wouldn't confirm or deny whether it was magical. She would she would say to him that her parents had bought it for her. Not bought it, sorry. Her par- her parents are milliners and they would have made they made this hat for her for when she left home. It was a family tradition. But she's going to avoid confirming or denying whether there's anything magical about her hat. Apart from the iron stone, which is circling the hat, which is clearly magical and it's a separate thing of its of its own. Um, no, that I think that's all. I think that's all she would do. She would probably tell him a little bit about her background and working working for um, Casper. Um, but other than that, there isn't much to tell, or okay. she would think there isn't too much to tell. Okay, Cuban. He didn't really, wasn't really interested in me. He was interested in Orland. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, but I, I imagine he'd be asking you about Orland. Oh yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, yes, he's um, he's a bag we acquired uh, from. Uh, oh, where was it now? Uh, I think Esther. Uh, yes, that's right, Esther. Apparently, uh, yes, back in uh, Drunel. Um, yes, he's uh, he's he's he, he can be a bit prickly, uh, but um, Alora used to look after him. But um, they had a bit of a falling out. Uh, so, and seeing how Ogva looks after him, i.e., you know, the uh, bag butter, uh, and uh, it was his idea to get the chain uh, mail to uh, guard, you know, protect uh, Orland. Although, to be fair, uh, Alora did pick it, those gems are Alora's to put on and I mean, he, he, he's, a, he's a very happy chappy uh, uh, as long as you don't upset him and then he's not very nice I, I think Otto's going to be chuckling through most of that description uh, so um, so does it always give you back what it eats uh, y- yes uh, sometimes um yeah, I mean, the poor thing, um, sometimes he has stuff in it that he doesn't want. Uh, like when we first got it, I, I, I seem to recall some dirty wellies and some dirty <laughs> pants. Um, uh, we had great, don't mind me. We had, we had, we, we had great fun with those. Me and uh, Ogvar did a bit of uh, uh, welly wanging with the wellies. Uh, and yes. Um, I believe Ogva did something to the pants. Uh, uh, I think he flicked them over the edge or something. Um, so, yeah, somewhere down there, somebody's going to have a, a pair of dirty um, dirty undergarments uh, uh, probably on their roof. Uh, 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 but yes, yes, no, it, 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 it's, you know, he, I, I think he's he's glad that uh, the, the, the people who had him before um, I think we treat him with a bit more respect. Um, well, Otto, Otto, I think I think that Kieran's perhaps missed a little bit out there. I mean, yeah, Esther did have Orland originally, but it, it, Orland came to us via Esther's grandson, who came over to take her place at the church in Drenau. And yeah, the underpants were fired off off the edge of the tower walls and stuff. It's on a promontory uh, in in uh, in Drenau. Uh so yeah, they they kind of got fired off the promontory. Anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> happier times. Does he eat things that he likes to eat? Are there things that he likes to eat? I have some. Oh, well, I can grow some berries if, he, if he'd like some. I mm. uh, I don't think he actually eats. Uh, he's sentient. Um, but um, uh, uh, as in um, actually devour and uh, uh, sustain, I don't think he does that. It's, it's sentient. He it, it just takes uh, well, he's looked kind of, after things. He's kind of special, isn't he? He's, yeah. He sees, but he doesn't have eyes. We haven't quite worked that out. And Well, you just don't question him over these things. You just go with the flow. Curious. Um, well, perhaps I can... 
tempt him with some other things another time. Uh, maybe when we're, when we're not being jostled around on this wagon. So, Ogvar, you were questioned about your bird. Me bird? Your bird. I was going to say crow, but then I thought raven, and I thought, I'll just get bird, it's safe, isn't it? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, this is, uh, this is Murdoch, he's my, my, my raven. He, uh, he's been with me a little while now. He, he, he found me, I suppose, would be the best way to, uh, to explain it. He just... Uh, I woke up one morning and, um, and there he was. He was, well, he wasn't, he wasn't there as such. He was, he was outside the window and uh, he wanted to come inside, so I let him in and uh, haven't really parted ways since. He's, uh... Yeah, that keeps happening to you, doesn't it, Orgo? Things what? finding you. Well, People I... finding you. What? Must be some kind of magnetism that we don't know. Who else has found me? Well, well Otto's here, one. isn't he? Oh yes, of course. Of course, what you meant, um, somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we was going to go down a different path. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sorry, sharing sorry. a little. Yes. Oh yes, it's um, he, he's he's coming along quite nicely. He's, he's learning some little, little tricks and he's he's proving useful in uh, navigating. Yeah, I can only do so much, I can only see so far, but uh, with him scouting ahead, I, I'm i getting quite good at finding my, my way around now. Can you talk with him? Uh, to an extent, yes. It's not, not, not have a, a full conversation, but um, yes, we get uh, a bit of correspondence going, as it were. He can answer questions, and he, he hasn't asked me any yet, but um, he, he's very helpful and very amenable to it. Oh, should you... Um have need of understanding in great I can use my magic to help in that regard just let me know but, uh, that'd be very interesting I, I might I might well take you up in that offer uh-huh. so, and, uh, I think at this sort of like uh, Murdoch would probably uh, as we're talking I assume Bojo is nearby so I might land on Bojo's back and just have a little bit of a lift for a little bit so I'll just come in and like listen to the conversation going on I can imagine Bojo very briefly standing there cross-eyed trying to see the, uh, the bird on his head before <laughs> <or> just <laughs> shrugging and carrying on. Okay. Laura will be sitting on the carriage. Um, she would have been reading um, the book that Esther um, had given her by uh, Iram Bhatti. Um, she would have been studying the book over the, the few days of travel. So she's kind of got the book on her lap and she kind of opens it and reads bits of it and then closes it for a while and that's that's what she's doing while everyone's talking. Okay. So, over your three days of travel, obviously you'll be having two overnight stops. Are you wanting to use your rations or are you wanting to do a bit of hunting? If you don't fancy hunting and you don't mind just having a little fruit I can provide some berries they're quite nourishing though perhaps your stomach won't be too won't feel too full well we have got a bit of food yes we have I think we probably Laura would either look to rations or look to supplies and maybe maybe look look to uh, queuing yes uh have some, uh, uh, well, depends what everybody would like, really. Uh, we've got meat pies, sausage rolls, cream pastries, various muffins, breads, tarts, sweet, savoury pastries. I think over the three days, Alora would have had just various stuff <laughs> from that selection. Yep. Otto would eat nothing. It depends on, you know, if anybody goes hunting, we can obviously make a stew and have some bread. I think um, Ogvar would take up Otto's offer of, uh, of some some nuts and berries and things like that. It's, after a couple of days of pastries, he'd probably want something a bit uh, something a bit tart to cut through the, uh, the stodge. <laughs> Not sure how he might have imagined it, but he's going to pull out a few seeds, whisper some sweet somethings to them, and they'll develop into these nice, rather large plants with a single large berry on the end of each uh, sort of vine that comes out, 
and you'll end up with a small number of watermelons, which, oddly enough, will make for very nice good berries. And I know Bo- Bojo would definitely come up and appreciate that he'd get his share at this point. He, it's one of his favourites. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll be quite impressed with oh, that's, uh, that's good, I like it. I, I did this once with a carrot. Very good. I, you'll find them quite filling. Okay, so over the over the two nights and three days over the course of your meals, you're probably able to kind of scrummage up enough by a hunting, getting stuff out of Orland, pastries, good berries, you know, rashes between between the, between the, the five of you. You're able to kind of get what you need, um, and you won't need to reduce uh, take anything off any rations. Um, you'll be fine. So on the third day. You are travelling again in this very bleak landscape. It's perhaps a more of a greyer day, um, and Ogfar, Otto, and Laura, you would all be able to tell from being in nature and being on the sea that there is a, a storm brewing in the distance on the horizon, over the over the water. Um, it's the, the winds are cold; they're quite cutting. Uh, they the canvas. Hoops, uh, the canvas laying over the hoops of this wagon, it snaps in the wind. Um, the horses are probably a little spooky, a little bit fresh, uh, and and you can see Bojo's thick, heavy coat being ruffled by the by the wind, um, blown into little whirls. So you travel for probably half a day. Uh, and it is very much the same landscape, and you are very much getting bored of this landscape. It is scrubby, dry grass, and then more scrubby, dry grass, and then perhaps a little bit of marsh, and then, surprise, surprise, some more jubby, scry grass. Uh, it, it's very flat, and as you approach midday, you can all... Ever make me spot check? Okay. That's a four plus five, which is a nine for Laura. Okay, blind. That's a <laughs> uh, sixteen plus five, twenty-one for Kieran. Nice. Uh, eleven plus eleven, twenty-two. Nice. Twenty-two plus twenty-two, and Otto has got a thirteen plus sixteen for twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Wow, look at that. Okay, so everyone, with the exception of Laura. Laura, who's possibly hunkering down in the back of the carriage, um, you can all start to see in the distance, dropping away as as the land begins to go downhill. You can all see a large grey smudge that, as you progress on through the afternoon, approaching one o'clock, resolves itself into what has to be the most eclectic looking tower you have all ever laid your eyes on just from this distance you can tell that this tower is pretty darn big you'd say from this point it's probably about seven stories tall with a large roof on top as well and there is not a single straight line involved in in this (laughs) tower's construction it is, you can tell, the, the fact that you're seeing it from this, this distance, you can tell that this is a large, large tower. Uh, but the different layers are different floors, are all kind of at different angles. The ground floor leans to the left slightly, the first floor leans to the right. It, it seems to have been held upright simply by counteracting forces, gravity and quite possibly magic. <laughs> and the, the roof on this thing, it is a traditional kind of Disney-esque tall... Oh, a con- conical tower, lovely. Traditional Disney-esque uh, tower uh, made of what you would assume is kind of blue shingles. It looks kind of bluer than the grey of this tower. Um, and it is ridiculously tall. It starts off at the edge and it, it comes up in a cone shape and then dips and and shoots upwards into the sky at a ridiculously sharp angle um, leaving the, uh, what appears to be like a, a rod of some kind poking up into the air it is 
possibly the strangest construction that any of you have ever seen. Uh, Otto, you would have been more used to the uh, more kind of quaint, rustic, uh, granary, granary region-based buildings of Hanweir. Um, these kind of low squat, well, not squat, but low buildings, long, made of wooden beams and, and uh, perhaps even wattle and daub in some cases. Uh, these very traditional, old, kind of picturesque, almost Ger Germanic style buildings. Uh, Kewin, you'd have been used to the kind of the clean cut lines and white stones and heavy marbles of, of um, Gavany, not Gavany, of Raven. That's what I'm going for. Uh, the, these kind of clean lines, thick, strong architecture which screams of power, wealth and opulence. Elora, being a bit more travelled than perhaps the rest, you'd be used to the kind of the run-down slums, shanty buildings of the coastal ports, as well as this mix of more grand architecture and kind of plain brick and stone houses that are made for functional reasons rather than beauty. And Ogvar, this would be probably the most alien thing to you, being a man of the woods coming from um, Kessig, in these small isolated villages where, yes, the buildings are stone, but they're dark stone, they're, they're low set, they've got overhanging eaves and, and long sliding roofs made of, you know, wood, or uh, even from uh, kind of thatch, almost thatch from the trees, you know, you, you're all very much used to different styles of buildings and this this one building it's something that none of you have ever seen before it is so bizarre and alien in its construction so as you approach ever closer because you're assuming that this is the tower it's the only building you've seen for days as you get closer and closer and closer you can see that the land narrows down um, uh, and you can actually see that you're you're almost you're travelling out onto this this furthest jut of rock, the the most eastern you can go in in Strad. As you get closer, you can see more and more details of this building start to resolve themselves. You can see different sized lumps of stone. So one floor might be big square blocks, the next floor will be lots of small blocks stacked together higgledy piggledy. Um, another floor, as you go the, go up to perhaps the third or fourth floor. Um, you'll see that it is this kind of almost standard brick layout except that it's vertical rather than horizontal. It, it is a very odd looking building. You can see recesses cut out where windows are set in. You can see kind of sash windows, bay windows, these almost medieval kind of um, almost arches, arches style windows. These very thin narrow slits with, with kind of deep cut carved, carved out um, stone. I mean, there was everything. You can see on the fifth floor there is a door which simply leads to nothing. Just a random doorway. Just just in midair. Uh, you can see on the ground floor you can see more kind of wooden constructions, almost kind of sheds, outhouses built around the base of the tower. It, it is just so incredibly alien. You can see par parts of the building where there is a balcony However, there is no way to get onto the balcony. There is no door, there is no window. It's just a balcony floating in midair. It is bizarre. And the more you look, the more you see it's just, it's so odd and nonsensical. I'm assuming that Laura would see this as they drew closer. You're all seeing this. Right, okay. Uh, how far away is it? So by this point, it's probably three o'clock, and you're probably, uh, I don't know, maybe another another hour's travel off from it. Certainly, it stands out a bit, doesn't it? Oh, it is. It is large, and I mean, you're you're kind of assuming these are floors simply based on the different kind of designs and styles and angles, but these floors are easily kind of fifteen foot in height, if not more. Well, look, just just look at this thing. Look at it. I, I know it's a ways off yet. I mean, but it seems to have well, there's some little structures around, but it's just that's just incredible. I've never seen anything like it. Have you? Oh, no, it's a 
From here it looks quite, a, quite an odd construction. Pa never built one like that. It, it, it looks to me almost like someone's done a style, got bored, done a different style, got bored, done a different style, got bored. It's almost like an apprentice doing, a, uh, doing some work. He's gone so far. Well, I've done that. I've mastered that part and... Well, I'll do brick this way. Well, it's got kind of cantilevered bits and odds and sods mm. attached to it. That's I mean, really... It's well, quite amazing. Got a, why has it got a balcony? Just well, I can just it. about make it out from here, but yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. But then again, if they were practising... Well, uh, well it's, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. That's one word for it. I presume this is the tower you're looking for. Uh, yeah, this, this, yeah... I don't think there's going to be another one like this. I, I would say that this is definitely what we're looking for. I suppose we'd better head towards it. Can you pick up pace, Ogfar? I can try. I can give the, uh, the horses a bit of a, a flick of the reins and see if, there's, uh, if they're willing. Yeah. The horses definitely pick up pace. And as you travel downhill towards the tower, you, you obviously get closer and closer and it looms larger and larger until you are stood stationary in its shadow. Uh, the, the day has darkened as, it, as it's gone on and you can all tell. Uh, Laura, roll me a knowledge... Um, have you got like a knowledge sailing or a knowledge ocean, something like no, that? Yeah, no, I've got knowledge nautical. Yeah, roll me a knowledge nautical. Uh, that's a seven, a straight seven. Seven, yeah, okay. You, you're not entirely sure. Not actually standing on a boat. Um, you're not, you're not exactly sure. If if you were on a boat, you'd probably be able to tell a bit more because of the way the sea's moving and the, the roughness of the sea beneath, uh, beneath your feet. Uh, however, you would say that this storm is perhaps only a couple of hours off now. It looks dark and dirty. Uh, to the point where the horizon is almost kind of this coal black. Would she look at it and think that it's just a storm or more like a nebble gas blowing in that she might have seen before? Mm-hmm. Roll me a knowledge uh, arcana. Have you got an arcana check? Yep. Yep, roll yep. me one of those. Okay, that's an 11 plus 8, so that's a 19. Yeah, no. You are not entirely sure if it is. It literally looks like someone has taken, uh, like some, some kind of massive being has taken a charcoal smudged thumb and rubbed it across the sky in this arc. It is black as coal over the sea, gradually petering out above you. Um, it, it looks like it's rolling in. You, you wouldn't think it is a Nebelgast. I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but that sky is grim. We are in for a hell of a storm, because I swear that's coming this way. Uh, I, I don't think it's like the storm that we saw in Dranau, but that's going to get real wet, real blowy, real quick. Uh, we probably need to get the horses in somewhere and secure the wagon and the goods, and I think we'd better try and... How do you get into this place? I think... Is there a main door? Uh, I don't know. Can can we do a search check for a door? Yeah, roll me a search check, everyone. What what a door that's on the floor, that is. Not five stories up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, search check. That's a 13 all-in for Laura. That's an 18 all-in. That's an 18 plus zero. Yeah, same here. Nice 13 one. plus zero. Uh, 13 for Ogvar is 6 plus a 7. And nice. Otto has a 4 plus a 3, just 7. Okay. You all spend some time, you obviously dismount the carriage, the horses are fine, they're not going to run off. Um, you all spend some time travelling around the outer edge of this building, looking for an entryway. You can see some windows lower down, however looking through proves fruitless. Um, you can't actually see anything through the windows. How wide is this building? 
This is the big question. As you walk around the building, you pace around, you can probably estimate that this building has a diameter of somewhere in the region of 50 foot. It's That's huge. It's yeah. yeah, it's it's large. I mean looking up you cannot see the top of the tower from where you're stood at the base. It is humongous. With with roughly fifteen foot per level, you know, up to the seventh floor of this tower, it's a hundred and five foot and then you've got the, the this big conical roof on the top as well. This tower is massive. So you will spend some time pacing around the edge looking for an entryway. You know, um, who had the highest score? Is that Otto? Oh. No, no, not with the seven. I, I had 18. Okay, cue in. Yeah. As you come round, so you've, you've practically done a full walk around of this building. And as you come back to just before where you started, you spot a door. Is this a, just a wooden door? Uh, 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 uh. It's it's a very generic looking door. It, it just appears to be a you know, generic wooden door. Uh, uh, I say, uh, 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 there's a door here. Uh, it, uh, it's a pity I, I started going that direction because apparently cause it's just by where I started. Uh, <laughs> if I'd have gone the other way, I'd have found it earlier. <laughs> Laura's just going to laugh. Uh, shall I give it a good old bang? It's either that or we get wet. There doesn't seem to be a bell pull or anything. No ring door pal. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Kieran, give that a go. But don't don't bash it in, that would be rude. Ah. I I'll, I'll try to knock knock gently. Okay. What? You knock on the door. You give it a smart a three smart raps, and as your final rap echoes. As you look at the door, all of you can see the words come in appear inscribed upon the wood. Oh, look at that. Look, look at this. Uh, uh, that wasn't there before I hit it. Uh, just, is, is there a door handle? Oh, there's a door handle, or yeah. A... There's a door handle. Okay. Well, Laura's going to place her hand on the door handle and tentatively turn the handle or the ring or whatever it is that's on the door yeah. and... Opens out with... Push. Oh, you absolute <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it didn't say pull or push on the front, did it? Um, okay, so she's going to... It would be. It's going to be the opposite way to what you would expect. Yeah. Okay, Laura's going to try and push it, and it's not going to budge, so then she's going to go, huh? And she's going to try and pull the door open. Make me reflex save, please. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> uh, reflex. Oh, that's a three plus eight, so that's an eleven. Yep, no. Okay, so as you open the door, you are going to take... Okay, you got lucky. You're going to take seven points of damage as you open the door and two... But you can only describe them as boxing gloves, basically. Two boxing gloves. One comes out, smacks you directly in the face, and the second one comes out and smacks you directly in the gut. And for all those watching this happen, you can see that as Alora opens this door, there is nothing behind the door apart from stone wall exactly the same as the wall of this tower, from which these two gloves appear, promptly sock her in the face and gut, and then disappear along with the door. Oof! Oh! Oh! That was very what rude. the... Oh, she's going to just kneel down and she's a bit winded and try and... Are you okay there, Laura? Did did you see that? Uh, Yes. um, I I, I don't... um, This is why I always tend to go first. Because if they punch anything, they punch me. I'll do, do wrap up. I've had quite enough already. I don't okay. need your bloody advice. Okay. You 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 can go first next time as well. <laughs> Everyone, make <sighs> me a spot check. Laura's please. volunteered. <laughs> Who's that for? 
Everyone, make me a spot check. Oh, okay. Laura's looking at the ground. <laughs> You're trying to. Your eyes are watering severely. Yeah, yeah. Um, at this point, can I just roll for this false life so that... Yes. Kieran's got eight, which is a f- uh, roll of three plus five. Okay. I'll go, I'll go another nap twin. <laughs> Wait, oh look at him. God. Racking them up today. On fire. <laughs> um, okay, so it's... Yeah. <laughs> Otto. Like, hopefully for something useful. Otto rolled a 19 <laughs> plus 16 for 35. Nice. Nice. Wow. Jeez. Elora? Elora's just rolled a... She's just rolled a 10 on her false life, so it's 10 plus level, so that's an extra 19 temporary hit points, just to, just to declare that now. Yep. And okay. she'll take the... How many points was it she took? Seven. That's right, so she'll take that off those now. Um, okay. So the spot check? Spot check. Oh, sorry. Spot check is going to be. Um, where were they? No, the bears by the carriage. <laughs> that's a <laughs> that's a twelve plus five, which is uh, seventeen. Okay, nice. So, um, Otto and Ogvar, as this door shimmers and disappears, seemingly melting away into nothing, you both spot a slight movement out of the left hand corners of your eyes and you see a similar differently designed door appear about 15 foot further along the wall to your left that wasn't there a moment ago was it or or am I imagining things um yes that um that wasn't there before and it's it's there now that's quite odd Mm. I wonder if we're about to get punched again It's all right. For Laura volunteers, go on. Okay. If uh, okay, fine. She, uh, what's it? What's it? Is it another door? Is it? It's another door. With a handle. With a handle. Right. She's going to cast Mage Hand. <laughs> okay. And she's going. Nice. And she's go- <laughs> she's going to <laughs> firstly attempt to push, and if it won't push inwards, she's going to pull outwards. Okay, yeah. But it's the other way around this time. It opens inwards. <laughs> I, knew that. I knew she was going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you use Mage Hand to push the door inwards. The door opens. And then promptly, where you would have been stood, from in the darkness, because there is no light within this doorway, a stick comes swishing out at head height, equipped with what appears to be a large stuffed leather gauntlet which would have smacked into you at approximately face height (laughs) as this happens the hand disappears back into the darkness and the doorway again shimmers and fades and disappears and again all of you this time can see that another similar yet slightly different design door appears five foot to your right I'm kind of seeing a pattern here. Uh, yes. How, how many times do you think we're going to have to do this? Well, before... well, that depends on how stupid we are. I thought... But you just keep going until you find the one that's right. I don't think there's going to be a right one. Yes. I, I think we need to think outside the box here. Or outside the tower, or wall, or door, or whatever. I'm likewise becoming slightly fed up with this. Would you mind awfully if I opened a door for us? By all means, yes. Well, mm. well, there is something I can do, but, but feel free to try first of all. Oh, ladies first, of course, Lady Laura. <laughs> well, no, if you have a Who? better idea, I really don't mind. Well, I have some powers over stone, as I do over other terrain. Perhaps I could reshape some of this, and I will cast Stone Shape, and try to create an opening directly in the wall of the tower to see what might lie beyond it. Literally moulding it, pushing it back like clay. Okay. Yeah. So you lay... I'm assuming you're going to lay a hand on the tower to do this. Yes. You put your hand on the tower and you start moulding a doorway. It's quite rough. It's not any any in any shape, like artisan work. But you mould a hole. It is pitch black but you've moulded a hole into the tower. 
does the light from my armour shine and illuminate any part of this hole? It does not. Mm. I'm not so sure about this, but I suppose it's, if it's my idea, it's my turn to uh, to take one for the team. And Be careful, not all. <sighs> yes, I'd love to, but it's either this or the storm, right? And well, quite, quite true, yes, I suppose. I shall stride in. Okay. Laura's going to turn to Otto. Mm -hmm. um, okay, my friend, this time it's my turn. She's going to lay a hand on his shoulder and she is going to utter the words Resisto Malum, meaning resist harm, and she's going to cast resistance Ooh. on him. Okay, nice. So who is entering the pitch black hole? Otto. <laughs> Is it just Otto? Mm. <laughs> uh, I don't think Og Ogvar wouldn't want to see him going on his own. No, uh, no well, um, obviously, Kewan's used to go in. What's it? But do you want to go, for, go, go with him or shall I? Ogvar. Oh, I don't mind going with him. Okay, then you, you, you follow her. Elora is also going to reach her hand out and she's going to put a hand onto Ogvar's shoulder saying Resistor Malum okay. and cast resistance on him also nice well, that's a new one that feels strange. which will grant them a plus one resistance bonus on saves Tingly. okay tingles yes like cool mint <laughs> or if you're feeling extra adventurous extra source original mint shower gel Ooh, that oh that stings oh god <laughs> <laughs> famous famous stuff that refreshing. is refreshing no, we're not sponsored. <laughs> um, <laughs> well. <laughs> yet. Hint, hint, wink, <laughs> wink. Okay. Oh, so, Ogvar and Otto, you walk into the darkness. It is dark. It is pitch black. You cannot see a thing. Even with your glowing uh, self, Otto, all you can see is Ogvar, and all Ogvar can see is you. You walk for what must be about five minutes and as you turn around to perhaps look and check if Ogfar is behind you, you can no longer see daylight. The darkness has closed up and swallowed you. Walking can a little we still see each other? You can see each other, yes. Oh, that's good. Walking a little further, you see a wooden door. This one inlaid with some brass, uh, some sorry, some iron kind of nails, which are standing proud, and lit by a single flickering wolf sconce. Well, what do you think? Are we about to get punched again? Well, I am quite distrusting of doors now. We examined what was outside, and um, I'm a little curious as to why we've walked so far in seemingly such on one floor if you get my drift I do and it feels quite uncomfortable with all this darkness around I wonder where the others have gone yes um, can Ogvar try and light um, his oh no, he, uh, no he's got no uh, lamp on so we can't bad idea ok, okay uh, perhaps we yep. knock this time well we Yes, I think it's better probably to announce your arrival than to uh, just barge in, so yes. Uh, stand back. Wouldn't want to see you get hurt then. And okay. Otto will stride up to the door. Just. Yeah, I'll stand to the side of it. <laughs> just briefly looking down to make sure that there's nothing that they can see, like a welcome mat or something like that. And hmm. assuming that there's no <laughs> such luck, he'll just tentatively knock on this door. Yeah, if you knock on the door, nothing happens. Hello? Is there anyone in there? Nothing happens. I shall steal my gut, get ready to duck, and <laughs> see if the door handle will turn and try to open it. Okay. The door handle turns, but no matter how you push or pull, it doesn't open. Both of you make me a spot check. 
Okay. It doesn't even rattle in the frame. Is that another nat 20? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe brilliant. that. That's absolutely brilliant. Can... So glad I'm not running combat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all getting out of the way now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so nat 20 from Ogvar. For what it's Otto? worth, uh, 10 plus 16, 26 total. Okay, yeah. So, <sighs> as you kind of push and pull this door, I imagine there's a bit of a back and forth where you're like, oh, it won't open. And Alpha's like, oh, here, let me have a try. And goes, tries to open it, it won't open. As you look around and kind of take a step back to kind of, mm, what's going on here? You notice a large handle at the bottom of the door, parallel to the ground. Um, okay. Well, um... Do you think like a handle, like a lever, or a like a like a an, a straight iron bar? Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm a little dubious of it, but it seems the only thing around here. I suppose in for a penny, in for a pound. Um... <laughs> yes, yes. What are those? <laughs> in for a copper, in for a gold. <laughs> um, I'll try the other handle. Yeah. You grab the other handle, and pretty quickly you realise that this door slides upwards. That's different. Like and everything else. The scene you see beyond that, as you open this door, you see daylight with green grass, scrubby grass, a cliff edge, and in the distant horizon, a storm rolling in. <laughs> I found the way out. I do believe you found the door, yes. <laughs> Both of you, make me a reflex save, please. Oh. Do we get a plus one? No, not, not your resistance doesn't help that, does it, Sam? It resistance, it works on all saves. Yep. For one so, minute. Ah, uh, we've been walking for five minutes then, so it's... Oh, good. they've been walking for five minutes? Oh, yes. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. So... Ah. I like it. A two plus eleven. Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen, okay. Uh, I've rolled a seventeen plus five plus another one, so twenty-three. Okay. Otto, you're able to kind of dodge out the way as you hear this impending swoosh. <laughs> Ogvar, you're less fortunate, as what appears to be a boot on a stick comes swinging down from the darkness kicking you squarely up the back side, forcing you, uh, sending you flying through the doorway, giving you five points of bludgeoning damage, as you both tumble into the daylight and hear the door slam behind you. As you begin to right yourself, you hear a tittering cackle, and, sw and, and turning around quickly, you see a face has appeared on the door. It cackles at you, and then promptly the entire door disappears. Starting to feel oh. unwelcome. Yes, I thought we were making progress there, and um, it, it turns out we haven't really ended up much further, 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 further forward. And if we uh, just sat outside anyway, Kieran and the others gone. Kieran and Alora, after Otto and Ogvar had disappeared into the darkness, you saw the wall begin to reform. A couple of minutes have passed. You now see. A very, very ornate, ostentatious plaque appear on the wall, and words begin to scribe themselves. It reads, To test your metal, prove you're in fine fettle, retrieve the key from where the sea invades my gaping moor, and underneath is an arrow, pointing in a southerly direction. Uh Kieran, there's some. Um, you noticed this plaque that's appeared? Yes. Um. Have you read it? It it says. To test your metal, prove you're in fine fettle. Retrieve the key from where the sea invades my gaping moor. And there's an arrow. Look. 
Yeah, it's going that way. way. I'd say I've got to go and uh, find a key. And by the look of it, um, well, uh, uh, gaping more, more. That usually uh, 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 refers to a mouth. Is but there? there isn't a, I wonder if there's a um, a cave or something down. That is quite possible. Uh, I mean, we are pretty much at the the southernmost tip now. Um, Alora looks back. Is is there still is there a door visible in the wall again? No. Well, okay, so we can't see a door, but the key has got to go into a door. Well, it's got to go into somewhere. Yeah, Should... but I mean, uh, maybe until we got the key. Yeah, maybe. Or the actual entrance is it's more. We won't find. Well, hang on a minute. They went in without a key. Yes, but they, uh,. I don't know where they are, though. Exactly. Well, they went in. Yes, but the, uh, the it, it's gone. What's gone? The hole's gone, didn't it? Didn't you yes. say the hole had disappeared? Well, yeah, yes. I know, but then so have they. But the hole's yes. gone, They've but they've gone in. But do you know the spell? Uh, I have a spell that may do that, yes, but... Or shall I just go and possibly find the key? Ogfar and Otto... I'm assuming you're probably going to have made your way back round to where you left Kewin and Adora and Esther, who is quite happily just minding her own business. Uh, she's probably still sat in the wagon doing a bit of patchwork, a bit of darning, letting you young youngsters figure out the problem. So you round the corner into this conversation between Kewin and Adora. As our heroes headed away from Stagwick on the next leg of their journey, they made a beeline towards the wizard's tower at the southernmost tip of Nefalia. The three-day trip was for once tranquil and trouble-free. Otto engaged each of his new companions with meaningful conversation and light-hearted chit-chat, and their much-deserved downtime allowed for some personal tasks to be observed. The team were hoping that they would receive a warm welcome from the wizard Jenrik and some important insight to help them tackle their task of cracking the coded notes that Kewin carried on behalf of the church. Eventually, they arrived at their destination to find a bizarre building of impossible proportions and unique qualities, the angles and articulation of which defied gravity and would likely leave an architect agog looking for a likely entrance, of which there were apparently none, what they instead discovered was a whole host of hocus-pocus designed to deter the most determined of cold callers. After a stone-shaped spell was delivered by the Spring Sage, Ogvar and Otto were able to breach the walls, gaining entrance, <laughs> or so they thought. This, however, was short-sighted, and as a boot to the buttocks promptly placed them pretty much back at the beginning of their problem, the back door slammed firmly shut and winked out of existence. Arcing around what might possibly be considered as the front facade, although by this point in the farcical proceedings, nobody could be perfectly sure, saw Kewin and Alora pondering over a puzzle on a plaque that had popped into view. All in all, Gaining an audience with Jenrik was indeed proving to be a very aggravating affair. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Having you as a listener means everything to us. So, whichever streaming service you choose to listen to us with, please give us a like, subscribe and follow. We would love for you to join us on our Facebook or Twitter page, where you can catch up with all of our latest news. While you're waiting for the next episode of Secrets of the Silver City, why not pop over to our website, where you can read all of the information about this campaign, from backstories to setting. All of the links are in the bio of this episode. Join us again next week for the next instalment. Thank you for listening.